When buying for auction, just remember there are a few essential do's and don'ts. Before I go into them, I'd like to share with you a couple of experiences I've had at auction. First of all, I was on a Butters John B tour, uh, Stoke-on-Trent, where I was looking to buy some two up, two downs for my rental portfolio when I first got going. And I ended up viewing a property and tapping on the wall, and it was really weird. It had stub petitioning, which for a Victorian terrace is even stranger. Reason why? Because the house had gone like that, and they'd put the stud petition in so it didn't look like it had gone like that. Uh, and yeah, buyer beware. So you need to know what you're doing when you're gonna buy a property from an auction. There was also a property that had been through the auction many, many times. When speaking to the auctioneer at the end, uh, it's quite funny because they reckon it was one of their most profitable properties because of how many times it had been through. Properties were selling, 42, 44, 52 grand-ish, depending on the condition. And then uh, this one came out. Now, I'd been to view it. Roof had fallen in. Trees were growing in the bedrooms. Uh, it used to be a drug then. It was terrible. Uh, the actual cost of putting it right was greater than the value of the end value of the property. And yet, somebody decided in their infinite wisdom to pay about 40 grand for it because it seemed very cheap compared to the others. And yes, they put it in the auction the next time and it sold for about 42 and then it went in again two months later and sold for 38. It just went on and on like that. But there was always someone there willing at that price bracket to pay the money. So make sure you've done your due diligence. Check out the property, do your viewings, uh, research, research, research. Um, be prepared. Know what price you're going to pay. Do not go past it. Do not get the finger, do not carry it away with the excitement. You need to know what price you're going to pay. You need to know what the end value is. You need to know how much the refurb is. Maybe you'd like to get some builder quotes before you actually do it if you're not experienced. Uh, or maybe you're doing it what, yourself, uh, in which case it's very hard for somebody buying a property to do up to sell to compete with do-it-yourselfers because they don't look at the actual cost of the work, they only look at the material costs. Um, next thing, check out the legal pack. Maybe you need to have a solicitor to check it out, especially on covenants, short leases, anything like that, any problems um, that are in the legal pack that may restrict you doing what you want. Also, how long is it before you need to complete? Is it a 14 day completion? They're not so common now. They were around four or five, six years ago when you could complete within two weeks. Um, four weeks is uh, the norm for auction properties. But remember, when that hammer comes down, you've paid your deposit, you've exchanged contracts. If you don't complete, they can sue you for a 10 day completion. If you don't complete then, uh, they serve 10 days notice, you don't come in time, you can lose your deposit. So many things um, to be prepared for. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend a valuation or a survey because the valuation for an auction property is deemed as the valuation. Um, and then they just want a surveyor to go and check out the condition of the property to make sure it's mortgageable. Um, there's nothing, you can't really go around doing structural surveys and all types of things like that because um, if you do it costs you a fortune because you're not going to buy many of the properties from an auction. How many times, if you've been to auctions before, have you thought, right, I'm going to pay 120 grand for this, that's my bid, you start to go right i'm going to get ready to bid and get ready to bid and they start 120 and it ends up making silly money just remember if it's a strange property or a big commercial property you're only going to be bidding with commercial people so you're going to be paying trade for it but if it's a residential property especially if it's a house and especially if it's in the south of england and it's like a basic you know three bed semi <coughs> you will be competing with other people who want to buy it themselves um, so the best place this might shock you the best place to sell a property that needs lots of work is an auction <coughs> i know people go to auction looking for properties with lots of work because they think they can make a profit but guess what as long as you have the nerve to reserve it low <coughs> So you reserve it low, so you make at least two grand, which isn't great 
because if it does actually sell you could, could have made a lot more profit but pretty much guarantee that will create a honeypot effect when you get lots of people looking at it looking for legal packs downloads all sorts you will create a big buzz around that property uh, one that I did like that we paid 95 grand for it we reserved it uh, or uh, we yeah um, put a reserve on it of 100 it got guided at 90 it went mad <coughs> it needed 50 grand of work it was only worth 200 grand at the end of it uh, I thought someone might pay 125 grand for, uh, 125 for it no wrong someone paid 159 how mad is that I love putting properties that need lots of work in an auction for exactly that reason so those people who are there trying to buy a bargain I don't think the auction is a place for that I think direct to vendor is more that thing but hey watch my other videos to find that out that's my take on auctions I uh, hope you've enjoyed my five minute video